guys, it's Kelly Lenable here, and we are back with the second um, video for What Would Kelly Make? I just showed you a brief snapshot of the wonderful products that I had to choose from, and then I ended up going with the Wooly Winter from Mama Elephant and Winter Fun from Hero Arts. I just felt like I could put them together to just make this totally adorable winter scene, and since it's early in the season, I'm still totally into that. So I am um, just kind of planning out what I'm going to do and I don't pre-plan any of these like when you guys are seeing them video this is just me making them I only make them once you know um, I don't ever start anything over again and in this card you'll be interested to see some of the little things that we had to overcome um, but I'm just kind of rolling with it so I loved this little sheep who's all wrapped up in the Christmas lights and I thought that he would be paired really well with the presents from both sets and then also um, this beautiful tree stamp that it was in the Hero Arts set. And I just really love it because it has like the snow separated from all of the pine. Here, I wanted to use the sled and I really, really wanted to put some sheep on it, but it's facing the wrong direction. So we're going to use the mirror technique. So you're just going to stamp on a piece of acetate, stamp on acetate because it's slick. You want to go directly down and directly back up. Then you're going to flip it over and just press it onto your paper. Don't rub. This acetate is actually just the packaging from the Mama Elephant stamp set. And then I'm just going to clean it up with a baby wipe. If for some reason you let yours dry, just add a little bit of alcohol onto your baby wipe and it'll wipe right away. No big deal. So I was so excited to do the mirror technique that I didn't realize that I should have stamped my sheep first because he should be in the forefront. So obstacle number one. So I figured because the impression is so light with the mirror stamping that I was just going to go ahead and stamp the sheet up over top of it and like I'll just adjust my coloring. I'm not starting over again. Not after stamping all those little presents, which you probably, I'm not sure if you can tell in the video or not, actually gave me challenge um, number two, which was I got black ink in my background. We're going to fix that later. So we're going to stamp the last little sheep down and then we're going to start on the background. So I'm using distress inks and I just use um, full stick post-it notes for all of my masks and I cut some um, just hill shapes and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a sky with, um, what is that, salty ocean and then faded jeans. So I just concentrated the faded jeans up at the top and I'm going to do that until I'm happy with the coverage. Then I'm going to move the hills. And the reason we masked so we would have this really pretty snow mound in the background, but because I kind of have a two layer perspective going, I'm going to use, I'm just going to move one of those hill masks down and pair it with another one to get a layer of snow. So for this, I'm using shaded lilac. That's just my preferred go-to color for snow. Um, you could use a light blue or a pale gray. I just like the little bit of purple that it gives because I think it's fun and pretty. So I'm gonna add um, just a little bit more of that shaded lilac to the bottom of the card. And then that's pretty much gonna be it for the background for now. Um, I just really love the how easy it is to do with distressing and a little bit of masking and then you can get this super cool multi-layer Somehow, I've been having computer issues, P.S., um, a little bit of the footage got eaten. So I'm using C1, C3, and C5. This is the beginning of the coloring, though you didn't miss anything besides just the showing of the markers. I am using the C5. The way the stamp is drawn, it already has those little round shapes to make your sheep very fluffy. So I'm just extending out those little half circles, and then I'm also adding just a couple in on top of his head and in his body. These are really small images, so I didn't have to add a ton, but by doing that, you're going to make him look super fluffy, just like you could just run your little fingers right through all of his fluff and he'd be super soft to touch. And I'm all about, um, you know, going for that dimension. I love one layer cards, but I love one layer cards that look multidimensional. So I started with the C5, blended out with the C3 and then the C1. When you, I also colored all the other sheep. Um, when you look at sheep or lambs, their faces are more, they're, even when they're gray, they're warmer. So I'm using an E00 to just add in a bit of warmth into their faces, but I'm still going to blend that out with my C's um, so that they appear to be gray. I just wanted their faces to be just a hair warmer. And I really only added um, shading underneath uh, where their fluffy hair would hang over and then also where their faces would be tucked into their scarfs 
And this one in the back here has got his little hand up, so he would have cast a shadow um, on his face as well. So not a ton of blending on their faces, just something to give them a little bit of that dimension. I did add um, a little bit darker for the C3, just underneath the hair, where it would hang over, because that would create a darker shadow. But I didn't add that by the scarps or anything like that, just underneath the hair, um, since it looks so thick and like it would just hang over their little faces. I wanted my sheep to look white, but you could do them, you know, gray or black and still use the same technique because they're outside playing, sledding, having such a fun, good time. Minus that poor guy in the back who's just all tangled up and his buddies have forgotten about him. Um, I did give them a little bit of a pink cheek for playing outside. And then I'm going to do their, um, hooves. So funny thing about coloring something black, you can just color it black and that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with it. But if you want to give it um, just that little bit of extra oomph, you can leave a little bit of a highlight. So I did the C5 as my lightest color um, and then just left a little bit of a highlight on their toes. For the sled, we're eventually going to outline this. I was too lazy to dig out my marker to outline it first. Uh, but if you find it's easier, easier for you to color something that is a black outline versus more of a no line coloring look, um, then get out the black marker right away and before you do your coloring, it'll be fine as long as it's a Copic Safe marker. For me, I just kind of went with what was already there, feeling a little lazy, and um, I just did just, just some browns. I thought about doing it red, but I already felt like I had so much color, um, so much red in there with the other little guys that I just decided brown would be fine. So I colored everything with my lightest color, but then with my second lightest color is which is a 25 the e25 i'm coloring the entire back rail in e25 the reason i'm doing that is because anything that's darker automatically falls into the background so by making the body of that darker it already makes it look dimensional just by just by changing the color and making it a little bit darker so you can see when you look at it because of that darkness with no no other shading whatsoever it looks like it falls behind um so i used the darkest color just on the back rail and then right underneath where the sheep is sitting to kind of keep everything in perspective for the wood grain i just used um, a light hand in the tip of the marker and a few flicks of color um, nothing that was particularly special um, if you've watched my videos before, you've probably seen me color wood grain. I think it's super pretty and a nice way to add detail, so I tend to use it a lot. Here, I'm leaving the highlight on the front of the rails. That would be where the light would hit on that curve. When you have a curved object, the light is almost always going to hit on the curve. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind while you're coloring. Once we had the sled all complete, we're going to move on to those red pieces parts. I am super matchy matchy in real life. I like my fingernail polish has to match my outfit. Um, I just, I, I have a hard time with things not matching. So I knew I wanted his hat to match his scarf. So I opted to do red and I did a, just a couple of little stripes on his scarf for some interest. Um, if you're not confident in your abilities to do them individually, like I did here with the markers, that's totally okay. Just color the whole thing red and add in some white stripes with a uh, gel pen. It's totally fine. I wanted the hat to look like it was kind of falling over uh, on top of itself since it wasn't standing straight up. When the stamps were drawn, um, they already gave you a little notch. We're just going to extend that notch. So we're going to put the darkest shading. For me, I always color with my light source in the top right hand side. So the bottom left will be the darkest. We're just going to extend that bend that they already drew for us by adding some shading in there. So once I had the, um, I moved out to my darkest color and then I'm just going to blend on my way back, gradually building up the color so that the lightest color is the highlight is only on the right hand side. We're going to do this again with the sheep that is pulling the sled um, on his hat as well. And it's something that's just really simple. And since we're starting into the Christmas season, there's going to be tons of hats to color, I'm sure. Um, so maybe give that one a try and see how that works for you. Just something simple to give yourself a little bit of dimension. So here we're starting with the lightest color. Again, I'm going to fill the whole thing in. And you can see on that hat where the little notch is. 
and we're going to add our darkest shading into that. We're just going to do like a little half moon so that it looks like one's falling over the other. These scarves are drawn in a way so that the um, long pieces are almost parallel. So just pick whichever one you want to be underneath the other. Uh, there isn't a right or a wrong way. I chose for the one on the right to be on top. So I'm going to add my shading to the one on the left. And again, we're going to work all the way out to our darkest color and just adding in those little bits of color. When these objects are so small, um, you really do have to have a light hand. I'm in the habit of using four colors, but that doesn't mean that you have to. You use whatever's going to give you a blend that you're happy with um, without getting any bleeding or anything like that. And again, you know, just keep practicing with it. it you're only going to get better. Even me, I'm only getting better. So I use those same red and greens to color in the presence in the background. And now I'm going to add in some yellow. I needed something else. Like I couldn't just have everything be red and green and that would be too easy. Um, so I just brought in some yellow because I felt like that was a, um, I don't know, a pretty easy Christmas color to incorporate. And so when you do the boxes, the highlight should actually be on the side of the box for where the lid is. Your darkest shading is going to be underneath where the lid is sitting and then also underneath the bow. Those are going to be the areas that are most um, shaded. And then I use the medium color to also shade where the box crease meets. Anything, Any point where two things meet is always going to have some shading. Here I'm just going to fill in the entire tree with my lightest green color. Careful to avoid those little um, plots of snow. I just really love this tree stamp. It's so cute. And I love that they leave a the little snow there and it adds a ton of interest. And even though these sets, like when you look at them, don't look like they're drawn in the same style, uh, they really just work so well together and I think it just came out so cute. So for the shading on the tree, I am uh, using a light hand, just the tip of my marker, and I'm doing flicking motions. The reason that the flicking is so important in this particular item of um, that we're coloring is because you want to reproduce that texture. You want to create that look of um, pine needles while you're creating that look of depth. One of the things that I never even think to say because I do it in my videos so often is don't be afraid to turn your images. I was um, coloring with a girlfriend uh, a few weeks ago and she was having, she's like, I, I just can't get the flicking down. I'm having such a hard time. And it never even occurred to her to flip her paper. And it really doesn't often occur to me to say it. But if that's what works best for you, I do it constantly because I am more comfortable flicking away from myself than I am toward myself. So don't be afraid to, you know, flip it around to get the best angle that's going to work for you. Once I had all of the um, colors down in that flicking motion, I just went back in with my uh, Y03. I was careful to leave the highlight on the edges, but I just used that to blend it out. I didn't feel the need to use all of them again. Now we are going to do... Um, just it's I guess it's shadows but to me it's a detail work and this to me is what really makes the card is drawing in these little tracks from the sled and the little um, we're gonna put some footprints in and to me that is what helps just really make it dimensional and we're talking about just a couple little lines folks this isn't anything that isn't completely achievable by every level whether you're beginner intermediate expert all we did was just a couple of dots and two lines and just look at how cool that looks. I mean, it looks like they're walking in the snow. Um, yeah, I just, it never gets old. I, I love creating a scene and, you know, seeing it kind of be a little bit magical. Now to do this, I used a, a BV, a blue violet, and then I also used a um, C. Uh, that's just because I chose shaded lilac, um, but you, whatever color you do in the background. So if you ended up going with like a B, um, then shade with a lighter B, not the BB. Or maybe they'd be pretty together. I don't know. Try that too. Don't be afraid to try things. So I'm adding some shading underneath my tree as well. I will warn you, I did go back later on and add a little bit more shading with the C3. I just didn't feel like it was enough. And I only noticed after I looked at it for a few days. I did some detail work on the presents as well as the other little sheep's scarf with a white gel pen. Again, just a way to add just a little something to make it um, a little prettier. Now we're going to go in and do that outline work that I had talked about earlier. 
you can do this at any point before you color after you color right after you do the mirror image stamping um, just whatever works for you like I said I was being lazy normally I do it right after I do the mirror image stamping because I just prefer when everything looks the same when I'm coloring it um, but just you know outlining what's already there and then nobody will ever know that that stamp didn't face right instead of left you know it, it'll be the exact same image with all of the same details and everything else I did change the reins on the sled because I wanted this sheep in particular to be pulling it that's why I wiped it away before I stamped it but you don't have to do that you know, it's just gonna depend on the scene that you're building and then of course I outlined all the rest of the card because I love a bold outline and that's what I do so to add the sentiment um, which is just I think so fitting even though it came from the other set it says um, sending warm fluffy hugs and those little sheep are definitely warm fluffy hugs I added a couple of rhinestones to just kind of set off the sentiment and now I'm adding some clear wink of Stella just to the tops of the hills and that is the entire card um, if you haven't watched the technique video you can check that out and then I will be back next month with another installment. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and we'll give this a try. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.